Hey everybody, James Tierney here with tiernieducation.com coming at you with a very quick video uh, talking about the per worker production function. And today's video, I want to talk about the difference between a shift up or down versus a movement along. A movement along. That's what today's quick video is going to be about. I see a lot of students kind of uh, confusing this, and it shows up a lot on quizzes and exams. We start by building. We know the horizontal axis is capital over labor, and then our vertical axis is my output over labor. So what this per worker production function is saying, we're going to look at the output. That's, you know, we're going to produce something. We're going to get output, but it's going to be per worker. L is labor hour. And our input to this function is my capital per labor or my capital labor ratio, or really this is just capital per labor hour. So this is going to be our input. It's going to go in and then we're going to get some sort of output. Real GDP, you can think of up here as my Y. We know that this production function, this per worker production function is going to exhibit diminishing marginal returns. This is my per worker production function. So now we're going to talk about two different things. Let's go with red to talk about a shift up or down. The idea of a shift in the per worker production function is you're keeping the same level of capital to labor. You know, in our initial function, we would get some level of output per labor hour. Let's just call this point A so we can kind of see where this is. And a shift up or down happens if there's a change in what we call technology or productivity. So it could be up or down, but we're going to have an entirely new per worker production function, either a lower one or a higher one. So per worker production function, a complete shift is brand new. And what we notice, all right, let's call this a uh, single prime. Let's call this one down here a double prime. And what happens, get an arrow here, what happens is if there's an increase in technology, we see an upward shift. So even with the same level of capital, we get more output. So I can take this and you can see that there's a higher level of output per worker. And if there was a downward shift, let's say there's some sort of you know, technology uh, like outage or people become less productive, we'd see a downward shift. So even with the same level of capital per worker, we now see that there's a lower level of output. Let's call this double prime to keep consistency. So this right here is the idea of a shift up or down. It's a completely new function and it happens only when we see an increase or decrease in what we call technology. A lot of times this is uh, represented by the letter A or the idea of total factor productivity. Now let's go ahead and change colors here a little bit. We'll go to blue and let's talk about a movement along. So let's again say that we have some level. I'm going to keep everything on here. So I might get a little messy, but I want you to pause this video, rewind, go back, really understand what's going on. Let's start with a different K over L in this blue color. We'll go up to our initial function. And then let's say that we add a bunch of capital. So now we have way over here to the right, K over L prime. So notice how different this is. The first one, we kept the same capital. Now we're changing. We're saying, hey, we have initial level of capital. Now we've increased capital per worker. I can even show this as a, an arrow this way. Well, notice it does not change the function. So we have like point A now versus point B. And so we're moving along. So yes, my output per worker goes up. Let's call this Y over L. Let's call this Y over L B for the point B. And so we do see an increase, but it's a movement along. So the movement along happens, right? We're gonna have keep this with the blue. The movement along happens when there's an increase or decrease, and go one way or the other, of capital or labor ratio. So that's a very quick and very brief explanation of the difference between a shift up and down versus a movement along the per worker production function. We can only see sustained economic growth if we continue to see these shifts up, if we continue to see these increases in technology. That's the core, that's the base of the solo growth model on how we see long-term economic growth. 
Again, this is James Tierney with Tierney Education. Visit my website, leave some comments, subscribe, all of those things. Hope you got something out of this.